Hello everyone, and welcome to the Lakeside Gamer. I'm Eric, and today we are going to be looking at Axis and Allies 1942. So we're going to think about uh, what strategies you might use in the first round of the game for each of the five countries that are represented in the game. I'll talk about initial setup and uh, strategies that I think about and uh, concerns that I would have for each of the five factions, the five countries that are represented in the game. Um, now, I'm going to use the digital version of this because I'm going to show you what I do when I play the game in the first round. Uh, and the digital version of the game makes it pretty easy to see that. Uh, I mean, if you've watched any of the other videos that I've created, you know that I'm very happy to set up Axis and Allies games uh, to play on the boards. But I want to get a good visual as we do this. OK, so I'm going to uh, set this up where I'm going to have all five of the countries be played by me. And we're going to play through the first round together and I'll talk through each of the countries and what I'm considering as I play the game. Now, on this uh, digital version, there are two initial setups. There's the standard one for the second edition, which is the same setup that you would get out of the box. So your initial setup when you uh, put everything out and follow the directions on the board, uh, that is uh, the standard that what we're going to do uh, just because uh, for this other one, it, this Gen Con 3.0 is more of a tournament edition that sometimes is used. And even though I know some people who might be more interested in looking at this and um, praising or critiquing or debating about it might be interested in tournament play. Uh, I want to make this as accessible for most players. But just so you're aware, uh, the big changes here are uh, really, I think, the bomber for Ger Germany moving away from Germany and to Ukraine is a big difference because as you're going to see, uh, I'm going to try to attack and take out Ukraine right away. So therefore, uh, they would lose it right away, whereas in the standard game, you don't. And there are a couple of other changes, uh, fewer German ships, uh, more UK ships and uh, infantry at India. So those are some changes that are in this tournament edition. They do make a difference. They do create more balance. But um, honestly, the general strategies I'm going to show, I would use uh, the same way, whether I am going to use the standard setup or I'm going to use the tournament setup. So let's go ahead and jump into the game. And the first thing I'm going to do is consider what I want to do with Russia. Now, Russia, as a standard setup, they are going to be uh, at a defensive in this game. So uh, really, they have to do everything they can to stave off the stronger Germans from taking their capital, uh, taking Moscow. And in this version... The Germans are on the doorstep of taking out Russia and the two other cities that have industrial complexes. Now, remember, uh, industrial complexes, they are going to be the only places you can build troops. So for Russia, having all three of these countries, the, so the Caucasus and Russia and Karelia, is helpful for them to reinforce their troops and build more. But... It also makes it so the Germans don't own them and can't build troops. So the Germans have to do their building all the way back at Germany and Italy. So those are uh, things that are important to consider. Um, also, for the Russians, you want to get West Russia. <laughs> you you want to get the Germans out of there as quickly as you can. If you can't take them out at West Russia, you're open to be attacked uh, immediately. And that could turn dicey uh, if you aren't able to get the Germans out of there. Okay, so um, long term, the first few rounds, because the Russians are at such a huge disadvantage to the Germans, I, as a Russian player, am going to do everything I can to slow down Germany and grind them to a halt. So I have a few stronger units on the board. 
I've got a couple of fighters here, and I've got uh, two tanks uh, at um, at Russia at, at Moscow. Uh, I've got a tank up just north of that at Archangel, and I've got a tank down at the Caucasus. So those are strong premium units. Uh, I would like to protect them, but honestly, for the tanks. I'm going to need them for the offense at the beginning, and I'm probably going to lose them when the Germans attack back. So that's, you know, that's that's what I need to consider with them. Uh, on the other side, you know, you've just got a few troops here, um, and we're going to see at the end of the round, I'm just going to consolidate them. But really, you want to try to push back the Germans. Now, one thing that's really, really important for me is if I am Russia... I am not spending any money on the tanks or fighters early game. Um, they're good. They're strong. They're great offensive units. But if you are attacked by an overwhelming force of Germans, it's not going to matter. You're going to get destroyed. So instead, I am going to have a combination of artillery and infantry pretty much every single round until we've balanced the power where the Germans are no longer on the offensive. If, if everything's neutral between uh, the Germans and uh, the allies, then I could start thinking about building those stronger units. But I need to do what I can to take out whatever units I can and also leave a defensive force that can defend me while also not getting all my troops killed quickly. So... That means in the first round, I typically go for three artillery and four infantry. That gives me some balance there. Um, you could get, if you did not build the artillery, you could build eight infantry. But the problem with that is since the infantry only attack for one when they don't have artillery, eight rolls of the die for one isn't going to be super helpful for me when I want to attack. Um, but in this in this way, I only lose out on one infantry by replacing them with artillery. And the bonus is now I've got um, six units that will now attack for two, which is really important for me to counterattack the Germans whenever they attack me. So that's what I'm going to do on the first turn is uh, four infantry and three artillery. Okay, and I have purchased everything. And for my combat, you know, it would be a wonderful thing if I could clear out the Germans from every one of these territories that's uh, connected to the territories that I control. Unfortunately, that is not a reality. I don't have enough to do it. So instead, I'm going to focus my effort on protecting Russia and the, the Caucasus in the south. OK, so uh, again, it would be wonderful to be able to protect Corellia. But the reality is to protect Corellia, I have one, two, three, four territories that I would have to take over to attack or to defend against that one uh, location. So the reality is if the Germans want this northern you know, uh, location uh, at Corellia, they're going to be able to take it. So because of that. I don't want to leave it undefended, but I am going to focus my effort more on defending the other two. So I'm going to focus on, first of all, sending as many troops as I can down to the Ukraine. Um, and again, if you play tournament mode, you're going to have this uh, bomber that's at Germany is going to be sitting on Ukraine. So uh, that would be there and you would still be able to uh, take it out. Uh, with the troops that I would attack it with. And then everything else I can, except for the four infantry at Karelia, I'm going to take into West Russia. So prioritize anything that can move to Ukraine first, and then anything else that can move to West Russia, except I'm going to leave these four infantry because I believe I have enough. Now, I'll give a little caveat here. This is a dice rolling game. And Axis and Allies is known for sometimes you have an awful dice roll and uh, the, your opponent has a wonderful one. 
Um, and, you know, I, I kind of joked about that when I made a, a mock video of playing this game. Uh, but if you have the best strategy, you're just going to hope for halfway decent dice rolls. And if you, you lose it, it wouldn't matter if you brought your infantry anyway. You're probably going to, you know, lose that dice roll in that situation. You, you can't, you know, get so hung up on the dice roll that you overcommit. Uh, without defending what you need to. Because if you leave these four infantry, you're going to allow yourself to have some sort of defense so the Germans have to really concentrate on Corellia, which allows you to slow them down elsewhere. Okay, so because of that, now I'm going to move everything I can to Ukraine. So the tank at the Caucasus goes to Ukraine. I've got an artillery at Caucasus goes to Ukraine. My three infantry at Caucasus, I'm going to send to the Ukraine. Um, I'm going to send these two tanks that are at Moscow over to Ukraine. And I've got two fighters. So the one at Moscow can go there. Also, the fighter that's at Karelia can come down there. So they have three, four, five, six. So the Germans have six uh, total troops. Uh, one of them's a fighter, which is very strong. One of them's a tank, which is pretty strong. I've got nine. So I'm feeling pretty good about that, and I think that's the extent of what I can send there. There's not really anything else that's able to get there. But then there are five troops at West Russia. There's no fighter there. There's a tank, an artillery, and three infantry. So because of that, I'm going to send everything from Moscow, from the Russia territory. So one artillery, four infantry. I'm going to send the tank from Archangel, as well as the infantry from Archangel. And then finally, I'm going to move in the artillery from Corellia. I know that Corellia is going to get beaten in the next round or the next play when the Germans go. And I'd rather have my artillery supporting the offensive here and the infantry, you know, just they're, they're, they're a meat shield to try to take out some of the troops when they come in. So at this point, I have done everything I can for attack on this side. Um, so I, I I'm now have all my troops committed to Ukraine and West Russia. I'm not going to try to mess around with anything over uh, by Japan. Um, if anything, when the Japanese come attack me to the north, that can be a distraction that could slow them down from doing the things that they need to do. So that could be a good thing. Uh, but I'm not going to attack them with my weak troops. I don't have enough. Okay, so that's pretty much the extent of what I can do with Russia is to do these two battles. So I'll play them out. Uh, at, well, now that I made my move uh, in this game, you kind of go phase by phase. So now we're in our combat phase. And for our combat phase, let's start with Ukraine. And move in there. Sorry if my head blocks some of these dice rolls. But let's see what happens. Okay. Nothing, nothing. Only one. Ooh, that hurts. So, yeah, I got two, three, three hits total. So, um, that's going to make it a bit of a challenge. One hit for me. Two, three, four. Okay. So, um, unless they have an overwhelming roll okay so they got three all right so you could see this is a very <laughs> close battle because i had a terrible roll so having the three extra units made it so i'm gonna be able to just squeak by yeah and see i'm gonna lose one of my fighters which is unfortunate and this was with a terrible first roll and they had a good first roll i still won the battle but it's gonna be with just one tank and one fighter left so um, that's unfortunate for, for the battles moving forward because ideally I want to keep both of my fighters alive. But again, it's, it's the randomness of the dice roll and that's the risk that you have to take. All right, so now we are attacking at West Russia and this one is a little less stressful because there are no fighters here. It's just a tank and some infantry and one artillery. So... Okay, got two hits on a one. That's pretty nice. And three hits total. 
So we're going to get most of those guys out of here, all the infantry gone, and this time they're not even hitting me. So as rough as my dice rolls were for that first battle, this one so far is going a little bit better. So I'm going to clear them out before they even hit me, and maybe at most they'll get two of my guys, but none. Okay, so they got one. They took out one infantry. So West Russia will be in better position, which means if the Germans want to take them out, they're going to have to commit more troops in the next round. Okay, so, so that's the extent of it. Now, um, an important thing here, um, fighters can be a wonderful defensive tool um, because they defend for four. I want to protect any fighters I have like gold after that first round. I, I need both of them to go after Ukraine. But once that's done, I am not thinking about, hey, how do I protect the front line? I am always moving my fighters back to Russia proper uh, or any other territory that is one, uh, one layer away from being attacked directly. That way... If it is behind the uh, enemy, well, behind my lines, uh, it is not going to get hit. And then I can use it as an offensive weapon along with my infantry and artillery. And then I can retreat with it again after I've, I've done that. So that is my typical approach. So now that I've moved those troops uh, or the, that, that fighter where I want it to go, now I'm going to move my infantry up. So I've got this one that's down south. That's going to come over to Caucasus. I'm going to move this guy over to Russia. These two could, could go either direction. You could try to create a stronger defense against the Japanese. But I want to make sure that after I lose Karelia, I've got some extra troops to just be there as an extra buffer between... Um, the, the Germans and Russia. So I'm going to move these two troops over to Archangel. Okay. So move those over. And then, you know, I, I've seen people approach these guys over here different ways. I just like consolidating them because Japan, they could wipe them out in one round. But if you are putting enough pressure on Japan for the British and the Americans by having the Japanese go after Russia that actually ends up being a win for the allies because the Japanese they've got other fish to fry they have the Americans down here and really India is their major target to the south so uh, if they go up to the north that slows them down and uh, speed is of the essence for the Axis power. So uh, that, that's, it is just good to have the Russian troops here and invite the Japanese to try to take them out. And if they do, that actually ends up being a good thing overall. All right, so a, uh, last additional thing I'll do is I'm going to move this sub over here. The sub is pretty, I've always felt like it's not a very useful tool, but it can um, work together with the, the British fleet to maybe protect that battleship a little bit longer. Um, even if you're not going to win a battle uh, with that Navy, uh, you can at least take something else out with it to you really, the allies, they just want to sift through the German troops as quick as they can. Germany has a lot on the board and they are strong individually, but the allies have more together than the Germans and the Japanese do. So by taking out as many of their troops as possible, it will make it so at some point they're going to have less than the allies and then the allies are in a good shape to maybe win the game at that point. So this is a pretty typical board for me at the end of the turn for the, for the Russians. Okay, so again, move this fighter back to Russia, protect it, and then I just kind of consolidate whatever troops I can. Okay. So that's the end of that turn. And when I mobilize, I'm going to put two infantry up at Karelia. Again, the artillery is a little bit more valuable, so I want to protect it. And putting more infantry here, they defend the same as the artillery. So I'll just put a couple guys up there. Um, so I've got six then to try to defend to make it so the Germans have to send more my way. Um, additionally, 
as many as much as I can, I'm always going to put two artillery and two infantry down at Caucasus uh, just because it's a more forward position and I can continue to push forward with them either to Ukraine or West Russia if, if and when it's necessary to fight there. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to do is deploy the last artillery at Russia, which is nice because I have one more infantry I had just moved up so that artillery and that infantry can move in tandem on the next round when I need them to uh, either go attack someone or go defend somewhere. All right, so that is the Russian turn. And they have pushed forward a little bit, so they have a little strength. And then they are done. Okay. Germany has a little bit more to consider. So they've got a lot of troops on the board. But as I mentioned before, they are um, fighting the clock uh, when it comes to how long they have if the allies are playing this game well. Now, the Germanys do have the initiative here in that they can push and they get to dictate what the strategies will be. Yes, Russia got to go first, but they are just trying to prepare themselves to survive. Germany, on the other hand, they have lots of different directions they can go. So let's consider what Germany has to face. Okay, um, for me, my primary goal is to get to Russia as soon as I can. I know some people like to focus their effort on trying to get to Great Britain. But um, the challenge uh, that I see in that is you have to put a lot of resources into your Navy to make it so it's strong enough to try, even try, to uh, crack the shell of Great Britain. And my concern is by the time you've strengthened your Navy enough to drop troops on Great Britain, the British will be watching what you're doing, so they'll just dump more troops on Britain itself, Britain proper, and if the Americans see it, the Americans can help them and dump some more of their own ships over. So it's just, to me, it's a little too much to try to make that happen. Whereas Russia over here is kind of on its own. They can get some support from India uh, and, and, the, and the British, and maybe the Americans can send this fighter over uh, to give some support. But if the Germans and Japanese are both pressing enough, then the Allies are not going to be able to properly defend Russia and India at the same time. And that's what I'm going for when, when doing this, okay? So uh, with that, I need to go as quickly as I can so unlike the Russians, which are trying to be efficient with their money use, so they're not going to buy tanks and fighters, I am going to dump all my money into tanks because I want to move as quickly as I can. Now, this is a very high risk, high reward strategy. If the allies fend you off, um, you're going to lose the game pretty quickly because you go all in. But um, it's more likely in the games that I've played that I am able to press hard enough to get into Russia to knock it out pretty quickly. So um, I'd love to hear other people's experiences. Uh, if you think this is a foolhardy strategy, definitely feel free to drop some comments on that. But um, this is what I will typically do. So um, I am going to try to take back everything that I lost in the last round. So these two territories, but then also I want to take Corellia. So see, I've got uh, six uh, Russian troops that I have to defeat. So I'm going to move in my three from Finland. I'm also going to move in the infantry from over here at uh, the Baltic States because he can't go anywhere else. I'll take two more infantry from Germany itself and drop them there as well. So I've already got six infantry, so I'll just need to support it a little bit more once I assess the situation. Okay, so in addition to that, um, down here, well, there's usually only going to be a few troops in Ukraine. Now, if, if, the, if the Russians have some really good roles, they have more, then I have to commit more, and that might limit my ability to do other things I want. But in this case, since there's only one tank, I can move those two infantry 
And then I can move these two as well. And then, let's see, I gotta figure out maybe one more troop to put in. Well, I'll figure out what I wanna put there. Ah, I know what I'll put in. I've got this tank, and this infantry from uh, Africa. So um, down in Africa, you've got the British with a strong, strong stranglehold. You could fight for this um, in the old Axis and Allies game, the one from the 80s and the 90s. You know, there's no desert uh, separating North Africa from the rest of Africa. And I liked to try to take Egypt and get down to South America or South, South Africa. But um, in this one, I, I just don't know if getting the three IPCs and, and punching through this uh, Egyptian defense ends up being worth it for me if I can take Russia quickly. So I'm going to take my infantry and tank from here and drop them on Ukraine. So now we have six guys here, including a tank versus one tank. So that gives me lots to work with there. Um, let's see. But I think this other tank I'll move as well because he can't go anywhere else. And then from there, whatever I can get to West Russia, I will move in. So I've got three infantry from right here. I have the tank from right here I can move. I'll move this other tank from over here. And so I've got five currently. So four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to need some more. So I'll move in a fighter. And... Let's see, I'm just trying to think of what all I want to move from where because um, I want to also wipe out this Navy. So why don't I focus on doing that first? Take that fighter in, this fighter, and these. Let's see, I've got two subs and I have to decide what to do with them. Okay, so I will also... I'll move in a third, uh, no, that fighter can't go there. So I'll move this fighter from Germany to Ukraine and then I can move the bomber in. So again, in the um, Gen Con tournament rules, the bomber wouldn't be available. So I would actually have to consider whether I want to commit all these uh, fighters up here to uh, attack the British and whether I'd want to send these um, subs there as well. But since I have three fighters and the Russian uh, sub can't attack me, I've got enough to take out that battleship and that transport. So I'm actually going to go after the other destroyer and transport with these two subs. Again, high risk, high reward. If the destroyer wipe, wipes out one of my subs, then it gets dicey really quickly. But if, if I don't attack with them, I'm going to lose them anyway because the British and the Americans can attack these subs. So I'm going to try to be as efficient as I can, take whatever I can right away. Okay, so... The tanks, let's see, I've got plenty over here's the tanks at Germany. I'm gonna move up to Corellia. So now I've got eight up there. And I think I've got just about everything moved that I can on this side, oh, except this fighter. So I'm gonna commit this fighter to attack over here as well. So now we've got four, five, six, seven against seven. Uh, but what are the nature of what the troops I'm attacking with? Three infantry, two tanks, two fighters. So I do have a little bit stronger army. Um, but see, this creates a dilemma. And this is why uh, it's important for the, the Russians to take these two territories. Because now, since they have a strong defense at West Russia, uh, it's actually going to be a little bit harder for me to punch through. But since I'm trying to move as quickly as I can and be as efficient as I can, I'm going to take on the risk that I might lose at West Russia, but then I will take out as many of their troops as I can. I will also take these other two territories to make it so I can continue to push forward. Okay, so that's the extent of what I can do on attack with the Germans. All right, so let's do some combat moves. There are some combat fighting. Oh, I tried to go to the water and they sent me to Corellia, so go figure. All right, so I've got my eight. I've got uh, 
six infantry and two tanks at Corellia. That's the location that's got the uh, uh, production factory. And they have six infantry to defending. Again, I got one. I got two hits. But let's see whether they get a good roll. Nope. See, they got none. So the thing with the infantry is they only defend for two. So your hope is that they can get a few if you're using them to defend. But, um, you know, there's the risk that if you get all threes, fours, fives, and sixes, that you're not going to be able to take anything out. Okay. All right. Got two more. And that's it. So they took out one of my infantry in this round. Okay. So now I've taken this territory Corellia, which gives me a factory to build more tanks uh, next round if it's not taken back. Uh, at, at the end of this round. And this is another reason why I want to attack down here, because if I take this out, then it's really hard for the Russians to have enough troops to take this back, because currently they only have a couple infantry that can get to it, and then one fighter, uh, unless they move these other troops. So I want to go to, uh, to to West Russia and, and at least get it down as low as I can to hold on to Karelia, uh, to start building more tanks. All right, where are they sending us now? They're sending us to Ukraine. So we're down to the south. Got a lot of troops here. Okay, so I got got their tank. And the defender rolls, and he didn't get anything. Okay. And then at West Russia, we're going to... Nothing from my infantry, only one hit. Okay, and so the defenders, ooh, three ones and a three. Okay, so three hits here. I'm going to take those hits and my tank, and I'm going to retreat because I don't want to lose my fighters with no infantry backing. So, again, that that first round by, or that first play by the Russians was really strong for them to hold off uh, the attack on West Russia. And now there actually st is still a tank and a few troops that uh, are in existence to defend and also to pot potentially attack. Okay, so that that's, that's why the first play for the Russians was really strong. All right, next up, we are going to attack the British at sea. So another thing I could have done is send these fighters over to West Russia. Russia, and that would have been helpful, uh, but I, I just don't want to allow the British to get too much of a foothold at sea. I want to cripple them a little bit so that they can't send reinforcements and start attacking me in Western Europe. So as important as it is to go after uh, West Russia, I don't want to neglect taking out the British fleet. If I could take out the British fleet, then I can do whatever I want on land so, okay, the, the sub is just going to kind of sit there and my two fighters and my bomber are going to try to take out the battleship and he's going to hit one of my fighters. He's maybe going to take out two. Okay, so we finished him off. And, oh, he didn't get, okay, he did get the other one. All right, so I did lose two fighters, but they lost their battleship and their transport. So uh, they end up losing more than I do and they can't get their troops off of Great Britain proper. All right, so now I got two subs going after. Yep, and that was that's the risk is now they've hit one of my subs, so now it's 2 versus 2 and if he hits me first, then I lose and we're just going to go back and forth until we hit him. All right, we got him at least and he hit me back, so the transport's going to survive. But now the transport doesn't have any defense, so that makes it so the, the Germans kind of put themselves in better position. So together, the Russians and the British lost uh, 62, and me, the Germans, lost 50. Really, it was uh, that battle against the battleship where I lost two fighters, and then it was that West Russia battle where they dug into some of my better, um, better troops so non-combat now. Okay, my bomber, I'm just going to get back to Germany. And my two fighters, or my three fighters, I'm going to put back here so that they're in this central territory 
which means they can go here, they can go here, they can go here, they can you know, go back here if they need to, uh, to defend. So we can do any of those things. And then I'm just going to move all my troops up as much as I can. I'm going to leave some stuff back at um, France, particularly since this transport survived. So that was actually pretty big that they were able to do that. So I'm going to drop an infantry there, move these tanks up. Um, let's see. Move that infantry that way. And this one this way, just so I can make sure France is well covered and get all my tanks as far forward as I can so that they're ready for the next round. I'm going to move my battleship to reinforce my transport. And I'm just going to leave these guys because if I move them right here, that means they're going to get attacked by these British. If they stay here, the tank can attack them and a fighter can attack them, but that's it. So um, this guy, he's probably going to get killed by Americans, but that, it is what it is. At least want to try to defend a little bit. I'm going to end that one. And I'll mobilize all my tanks at Germany since uh, Italy is wide open right now, but there are no transports within range. These two transports, if they come down to here, then I would want to make sure I have all this stuff well defended next round. But since they're not currently there, I don't need to worry about them as much. Okay. So that's the German turn. Okay. Britain, I feel like, is the biggest wild card in the entire game. They're the only one who has multiple areas that they really need to figure out what to do with, particularly because they have this worldwide empire where they've got Africa, and they've got Australia, they've got India, and they've got Britain. So my first priority is typically to put three tanks at India every round, and then I decide what I want to do with Great Britain proper. Now, I really have two major options uh, that I typically do. Uh, other people might have other ways to do it. Again, I would suggest you, you know, drop your thoughts on that in the comments on how you might approach uh, using Great Britain here. But um, either you can build up your navy to make it strong. The challenge with trying to build a navy in the current circumstances is, yes, you could protect this transport, but you end up with a situation where if I build another battleship and that takes all my money and then they just send more fighters after it, then it's going to get wiped out and it, it ends up being wasted money. The other option is to build um, build fighters and bombers and try to reinforce the Russians there. The complicated aspect of that is now that the Germans have taken Karelia, you don't have a easy way to get where uh, you want to go. Though, since West, West Russia has been held and Archangel's up here, uh, you can get these fighters over. So I think that's the route I'm going to go uh, since the Russians are in better position. I'm going to try to build up some fighters and help defend the, the, the Russian proper. Now, notice the difference. For the Russian fighter, I'm protecting that like gold because they don't have a lot of IPCs, so I'm not going to replace it, and I just need troops. Britain, it's hard for me to get troops on the ground, to get boots on the ground, so I'm going to send all my fighters to have that role of four to defend uh, against the Germans wherever I can. Okay. All right. So knowing that's the case, I got my three tanks for um, India. And then I have 13 left and I'm going to build a fighter. Again, this is a defensive weapon as opposed to an offensive weapon that I'm trying to do here. If I wanted to go for the attack, I would go for the bomber, but since I'm trying to defend, I am going to go for that fighter. All right, so now 
I guess I'll take a freebie here. And I'll let the German troops survive another round. Now, this is the debate I always have down here in the south. I could go after this area right here. I can go after this area right here. I can go after this navy, and that's the highest risk uh, that you could take. Or I could wipe out this navy. So this is this is what I, I try to figure out. Um, if I'm being aggressive, I'll show you my aggressive move, but I won't do it. Um, if you like high risk, high reward, this is the move I would take. I would take the fighter from India, the cruiser from India, and the aircraft carrier from India, as well as the fighter all the way back from Egypt over to the same attack. And then... I have a sub down in Australia and a cruiser. So I have six boats and planes against a battleship, two fighters, and an aircraft carrier. You might be able to see the problem that that this potentially uh, is going to have. If I don't get a great roll, they're going to get three rolls of four, and they're probably going to get two or three of those rolls to hit. So... It's high risk, high reward. If I can get this, this wipes out one of their most valuable fleets that they even have. So this is one of their two battleships and one of the two carriers and two fighters. And I am in the driver's seat the rest of the game because now the British have a fleet down here and the Americans are going to attack from the north. So um, the, the allies are in awesome shape in the Pacific if I do that. But that's not what I'm going to do because I want to, you know, I, I don't want to go quite that high risk, high reward uh, in this round. So that's but if, if you want to, like, I, I'll do that sometimes if I know I'm not going to play a long game. Um, I'm just going to go all in and it will basically determine the superiority in the Pacific uh, based on that battle. But instead I'm going to focus in on trying to take Borneo because it's four IPCs. And if I can take it, uh, then it really like the, the Japanese only have 30 and they're, they're fighting against the British and the Americans. So it's really going to, you know, limit their ability to do things. If I take away f an entire four IPCs from them and then they have to decide whether they're going to try to, defend or take it back and if they are that's going to require their attention instead of going to other places so i'll take the fighter that's over at india and put it there and then i'm just going to take this navy over to that territory actually if i do that it's just it's not going to let me typically oh you know it's letting the cruiser bomb so that's that's good okay so they're going to do that I'm not going to do much over in India. Uh, I'm just going to kind of leave these troops here. I, if Since I'm going for Borneo, I don't have enough to go after this area down here, uh, Thailand, French Indochina. So uh, that's all I can really do in this area. But I can, you know, again, be a little risky here. This risk I will take because otherwise... What, what am I going to do here? I'm just taking my uh, my guys up here and dropping them to try to take another IPC. So that, that, that would limit the Japanese by five from what they would get typically. Okay, so I've committed my African troops. I've committed uh, some troops to try to take the area in the Dutch East Indies. All right, so uh, now that I've gone after Guinea and Borneo, um, if I could take those, that adds five IPCs to what I control. So that puts me in better shape. So uh, I'm just double checking, making sure there's nothing else I want to do. Oh, I guess one other thing I'm going to do, this transport, uh, because I'm not building a Navy, my options are to either move it back, which is pretty useless, or I can um, try to move it in somewhere. Um, so I think what I will do with it is I will take my tank here 
and I'll do an initial attack down here. Um, and that will allow the Americans to come and reinforce me. And then they can, you know, send their troops in as well in Africa, uh, actually. But I can also bring this ship in. Uh, I don't quite have enough. You know what? I'm going to go after, instead of doing that, I'm going to try to take out the German Navy. Then if I can, I can make it so they're not sending uh, troops on transports to uh, attack territories behind um, behind the line. All right. So again, all the things I did were based on the circumstances. Uh, you have to adjust. If my Navy was alive uh, from uh, the, the first round or from the German play, I would probably, instead of building the fighter, I, I would probably try to build some ships to reinforce it and just make that stronger as the game went on. Uh, so you know, I just have a couple options to work with. Okay, so took that guy out. Got nothing. All right. He's gone. So we've taken Borneo. Okay, so where are they going to send us next? They're going to send us to Guinea. New Guinea. All right, and... And this is if he gets a two, then I'm in, I'm in trouble. So I just hope I get a one before he gets a two. Yep. Okay. So I'm probably going to lose this now, but it was a risk I'm willing to take. If they go down to Australia, that's a bit of a bummer, but that means they went away from all the other territories. All right, so this battle takes a while. Eventually, he's going to get a two. Be nice if I got a one first, but I doubt it's going to happen. All right, keeps going and going. Come on, get a one. Let's finish it off. There we go. Hey. Oh, all right, I took it. Okay. That's nice. After multiple attacks. So now I have taken away five IPCs from the Japanese, which when they only have 25 now, that's it's going to hinder them and their ability to uh, continue to build and expand and move forward, um, especially since they're already somewhat limited. Um, the other thing that I would want to do would be to take out this Navy here, but... Um, because I wanted to focus on Borneo, I just spent or put all my attention there and now I'm going to be able to reinforce and then that will fo force their Navy to try to defend this area instead of um, trying for India. I mean, I might, as the Japanese, try for India anyway. And if they win, great, but uh, it makes it a much tougher uh, decision to make at this point. So the other thing I, again, the other thing I could do is try to take out the transport uh, that's off the coast of China. And if I do that, then it makes it so they can't get at India in the first round. Okay. So that's nice to go take Morocco. All right. So besides having India in a somewhat precarious state, we're in pretty good position here. So I'm going to finish off this naval battle in sea zone 16. All right, got one hit and he missed. All right. Uh, we've had really good rolls this, this round. Okay, so he's gonna take out one of the ships, but now the German Navy is gone. So they've been cleared out of the Mediterranean. So considering the position I'm in now, um, India is my greatest concern. Um, I'm going to move this fighter to the Navy here. So, and my air force or uh, aircraft carrier, I'm going to move out there to Borneo as well. And I'm expecting this convergence of these ships on this location. Um, but if they're going to send infantry there, that means they're not going to India. And yes, I would lose Borneo, but um, it, it's worth it to force them to uh, 
divert their attention away from uh, my main area. So I'm going to drop the infantry here back just because I want to make sure this is well defended in case there's a naval attack with fighters. Um, and then I'm going to move the infantry from Iran and or Persia. And uh, I'm going to move my fighter from Egypt over to India as well. So that means I'm going to have four or let's see one two three infantry a fighter and then i'll have three more tanks that i drop there which will make it that I'll, I'll have lots to defend uh which again it's possible the japanese can take it but uh if if they want to they're gonna have to go through quite a bit all right so that's everything on that side over here transport's done i'm gonna take my two fighters here and move them here uh, I could have bombed Germany, and ultimately they can do that, but I'm going to, um, you know, in, in the re regular game, decide if that's what you want to do. I want to move my bomber uh, over to help the Russians and then maybe do some offensive things. So I'm going to put it there. Uh, again, that, the bombers, bombers for me, I'm not really focused on them right now in the regular game. If you want to be efficient and take out IPCs with them, uh, you can. Otherwise, I didn't do any regular battles that I really felt like the bomber would have been critical for. So um, I'm just going to move it over here with the fighters to try to give some offensive push to, to destroy a, a lightly guarded uh, German territory. All right. So I think that's just about everything. Looking at the entire map. Okay. So at the end of the phase, I will now... Put my tanks down at India, all three of them, and my fighter at Great Britain. So it's a little bit more defense. And they're going to make their money um, from that round. Let's just look at what our income is for the teams that we've had so far. So currently, the Germans have production of 39, which is a little lower than they started, and the uh, Japanese only have 25. So the, again, last round or last play, uh, the last turn, the British knocked them down five. The production for the Russians is sitting at 24. So they gained one, they lost one. And the British is all the way up to 38. So the British is actually, actually tied now, just or almost tied with the Germans, which makes it so... You know, the the the, um, the overall production for the British and the Russians is just two less than the entire Axis powers. And even though the Axis have more troops, then you've got the Americans who are just like an entire extra uh, army, navy, air force that's available. So uh, the moves that I did with the Russians over here trying to push back on this side and then the British really trying to gain these territories down south uh, mean that uh, the Axis are, are, are hindered. All right, so for the Japanese, you can try to build your troops at Japan and work your way around to India. If you do that, it's going to be a couple rounds to get yourself going. And the tricky part is the American Navy is strong enough that if you are not matching them step by step or step for step the entire way, you're going to have to pump lots and lots of money into your Navy and not really do anything on the ground. In a turn or two, the British are going to have the initiative on land because they're going to continue to pump out tanks. So I've got basically one round to do whatever I want, and then I have to figure it out from there. Now, I know some variations of this game um, I, I, that I've read have said um, no uh, IPCs on China. And if that's the way that you're playing, that then you can't do what I'm about to suggest. Um, but what I do suggest, what I like to do is to build two industries before the other teams can come and come after me. And what I'll do is I'll build one down here in Vietnam, French Indochina, Thailand. 
And that will allow me to every turn make two more tanks, two more tanks, two more tanks to keep sending at India to balance out their three. And then all my other troops can help me to try to get to India. Also, if I'm able to build up here at Manchuria, and then I can get three more, I, I can get four to five tanks every single round. Um, and in doing so, I can, I, can, I can have freedom to go to India. I can go through the middle to try to attack Russia. I can try to go north to attack Russia. Um, and then I don't have to worry about the navies as much. The drawback to this is if you do not take out India quickly and get Russia out of the game, uh, which will essentially win the game for you, uh, then the Americans are going to be able to reinforce uh, their Navy with more naval forces, and then they're going to come after Japan. Uh, but if you can take out these other territories, then at that point, you can build a whole bunch of fighters or infantry or uh, more ships to reinforce your Navy. And uh, then it becomes a more even game, and the even game is tougher for the allies to win if the Japanese and Germans become as strong as them. Uh, but there's also a sense of uh, if you're playing where you don't do total domination, you have to uh, defeat the entire world. The Axis only need nine total uh, major cities to win. And if you keep all your major cities that you start with, well, we've already captured one, Karelia, if we capture Moscow and we capture Delhi and India, that's the other two cities we need. And if we are, sorry, Calcutta uh, uh, is the, the, the city that they, they're doing, but it's, it's in India. If you capture both of them, then if the allies don't capture another, uh, uh, another of the major cities back from you, then you are going to win the game. The game will be over. Uh, it's got a lot more drawn out if you play a total domination where you have to defeat everyone across the world. Okay, so because I uh, have just built the things that I'm going to build, um, I'm going to try to take out as many of these territories as I can. So I'm going to start with the things that I can control. Uh, or, well, let's see. Let's get this fighter. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. I, I don't think actually I'm going to do that. So I'll back that one up. I will take this fighter here. And this bomber, I want to go over there. I'll get these guys over there too, because I can. if I could take out that American fighter, that would be really great. I think I, this fighter I want to send over there too. Because if I could take out all the American troops, then I'll be in pretty good shape um, moving forward. Okay, so these infantry... Uh, I can send them all over so I can get my transport here, get a tank and an infantry, uh, put them on the one with one, get the other infantry on the one with one, okay, load it, and put my artillery on the other one and my other infantry on the other one. So I'm just, again, trying to be as efficient with my troops as I can. And now I can dump these troops onto the other American territory. And I have a stronger position there because of that. Okay. And then my other troops, since the British moved that, uh, their troops back, I'll move these ones in. And I'm going to try to wipe out this Navy. So, again, um, the British took five IPCs of territory, and I'm not doing anything to respond to that. So, even though they're about to lose their entire Navy here, this ends up being a win for the, the British. So, I'm going to send the fighter that's uh, over here. Is that the Caroline Islands? Yes, it is. I'm going to send that onto the mainland just to make it so we've got a stronger battle. And then this last fighter, I'm going to I'm really want to just wipe out the American fighter because that clears up the middle to just take everything that you can for the Japanese. Okay. So. 
attack Yunnan first. And there's two guys here. This should be pretty easy to take out. Yep, finished it off. Didn't lose anything there. That's great. Okay, didn't hit anything. Oh, I got one. But it's a good thing I have this fighter here to hopefully finish it off. But he hasn't hit anything yet. It's not very useful. Okay, now we finished him off. Go figure. Four infantry could have done it all by themselves. What troopers? Okay. So they finished that off. And then the last battle for against the Americans is to try to wipe off the fighter and everything else. Okay, two and... Okay, so we got two of them. One hit, two hit. All right, I'm going to lose a fighter because I... Oh, no, 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 no. One fighter. Lose an infantry, lose a fighter because I want to take this territory. Okay, fight again, attack, and... All right, finish them off. Okay, so I'm going to lose the fighter. So that was costly, but uh, it was costly for the Americans as well, and we took the territory. So now, now China is pretty much under complete control of the Japanese, and they can just continue to push right through the middle with only a couple of troops uh, and then spend the rest of their effort coming down here to India to try to wipe that out in the next turn or two. And if they're able to do that and have success, um, then you've got a back door to attack Russia if the Germans can't get them by themselves. Um, and you pretty much are in the driver's seat for the game before the Allies can do much else. Okay, so last thing I'll do. Oh, do I have any other? Oh, sorry, I got the Navy that we should finish off at, at Borneo. So couple of infantry. Oh, oops. I sent them to the land instead. Well, neat. That took out their troops at least, so I could just drop one troop down there if I want to. That's I didn't intend to do that, but it's helpful nonetheless. Uh, the question is, do I have enough here now to take out their navy? I guess I'm a little concerned because I didn't go quite the same, the right direction. All right, got one. Okay, so I'm going to take out my, all right, we're going to keep pressing on. All right, well, aircraft carrier got a hit. That's nice. All right, I want to keep my cruiser, so I'm going to lose an aircraft carrier. It's painful. Uh, I wanted to have my, um, my fighters here. Okay, so I'm going to lose the cruiser now just so I can have a spot for my fighters to go. So they'll come back to the aircraft carrier. Oh, I also didn't move my battleship. Oh man, so that battle could have gone better. All right, so I'm gonna move all my fighters either up back to Manchuria or some of them down to uh, China, or not Th Thailand. Um, so last thing I'm going to do is get my industrial complex. And now those complexes are both built. I got troops that I can start building in the south. And I can start building some in the north. And um, you know, if you want to move these this battleship and this destroyer south a little bit and be ready to use them for an attack in the south, you can. Or if you want to be ready for whatever the Americans are doing with their Navy, you can start preparing over here. All right. So for the Japanese, um, a, a variant on what I just did would be to go back uh, instead of trying to take all the territory on the mainland to try to get Borneo, uh, to get the uh, Caroline Islands back. Uh, and so those are options as well. All right, so the Americans. Uh, so you have options with the Americans 
if you want to, you can take a lot of effort trying to support in um, uh, in Europe against Germany. Uh, it's a good way to go. I typically try to overwhelm Japan uh, because Japan can strike quickly and they can expand quickly because there's not a lot going on in mainland Asia. Uh, so I like to try to get my Navy concentrated up here in um, Alaska and then I can branch out from there and either try to just cut the head off the snake and go right after Japan or I can just start dropping troops uh, in Russia that they can then start going after uh, Manchuria. So that's typically what I do though again if you wanted to focus your effort here you can um, build more on the eastern United States but then you have to have a lot of transports and just constantly be shuttling troops to either France or uh, North Africa. So it's, it's a couple options and it depends on what the circumstances are. Uh, the good thing for the Axis in this situation is um, whatever choice America makes, it's going to make it more challenging for the other side to win. So if I go after Japan, the Germans are going to have an easier time continuing to push into Russia. Uh, whereas the Japanese, they're going to have to try to hold off as long as they can. So what I'm going to purchase here, I'm going to purchase an industry that I want to put in Alaska so I can keep pumping out um, infantry and tanks and um, fighters and bombers or uh, naval ships so that I can be a pest to the Japanese and then I'm also, I'm, I'm going to try to have naval superiority. So I'm going to build a battleship that I can build in San Francisco and then start moving northward. So uh, there's not much left here for the Americans in Asia because the Japanese took out all their troops. So I can't do anything out there. Uh, I really just now have what's on the United States and my Navy so um, I'm not going to end up attacking anything except I can move troops down here to Morocco, but it's already been taken, so I can just reinforce it. So I actually don't have any combat that I want to do because I want to get all my ships up to here, and so they're strong and they reinforce each other, and that forces the Japanese to decide, do I want to keep pressing forward in the south? Or am I going to come back up and defend Japan itself? Um, the India and Alaska can be a two-pronged attack to stave off the Japanese long enough to whittle down their forces. So I'm not going to do any attack there. And instead, I'm going to just move everything I can. And again, if I was if if Morocco was open or was not uh, controlled by the British, I would have attacked it with everything I could from eastern United States. But since it uh, has already been taken, I'm going to just reinforce those British troops in a moment. OK, and the nice thing about that uh, reinforcing Morocco is I can move my fighters there, my fighter and my bomber and actually have them defend that as well. Oh, that was an accident. So. Let's get those two infantry on, drop them, destroyer, battleship, and get the fighter up there. Well, actually, first, I'm going to get my navy up here. Um, oftentimes, the Japanese in games I play, uh, if they don't use the strategies I use, they're going to try to wipe out this American navy, and that is a very viable approach if that's what you want to do um, because it would prevent the Americans from uh, consolidating and reinforcing but again I when I'm playing Axis want to go for broke and I'm going to go for broke for India and Russia and then kind of pick up the pieces from there yes I'm allowing the Americans to become very strong but if I can take out India quickly as the um, as the Japanese then I will be hopefully strong enough to 
just to start building a whole bunch of uh, ships here to uh, go toe to toe with them. Okay. All right. So I'm moving all my troops up here. Um, there's this cruiser that's down here. You, uh, this cruiser is positioned strategically, so you can send them whichever direction you want. Um, since I'm, again, trying to overwhelm the Japanese instead of going after the Germans, I'm going to send that over to San Francisco, and then I can move it up to Alaska next round. All right, so I've got two transports on the east side. So take an artillery, take a tank, take my two infantry, and then... I'm going to be able to take my transports and just go and drop their guys here on Morocco. I'm going to reinforce Morocco on this side. And that will allow me to be able to potentially branch out next turn. I'll move the destroyer to reinforce all those transports. Uh, I mean, if the... If the Germans want to attack them, they're going to get wiped out, but at least a, a destroyer will, will fire back. And uh, this infantry, I'll move him towards San Francisco. Okay, so I think that oh, the sub and the fighter can also move up from Hawaii. There isn't anything super close to there right now, so oh, the sub's already up. Um Okay, so I think that's just about everything I can do. There isn't a lot in terms of troops for the Americans. They, they've got high level of IPCs, so they can build up quickly. All right, so that's it. Mobilize. I'm going to put my factory up in... Alaska, just to start getting a couple things up there each round, whether it's a tank and a uh, tank and an infantry to allow the transport to drop them off, or it's a um, you know two ships or two fighters. You have options, and then my battleship I'll put at San Francisco, Western United States, so that is makes it so my cruiser and my battleship can reinforce the navy. That is off the Alaskan coast. Okay. So that is one round of Axis and Allies as played by me, the Lakeside Gamer. So what do things look like moving forward? For the Russians, I will continue to just build artillery and infantry. And notice this round I have 28. So if I have 28, I'll do four and four. And I want to keep them fairly even. I never want to get more artillery than I have infantry. But uh, if the numbers balance out where I have like two artillery and six infantry, um, I'll do that. Or two and five or two and four. But um, four and four is kind of the ideal scenario until you're becoming super strong. Uh, and I'm just going to continue to uh, reinforce Caucasus two and two, two artillery, two in infantry. Uh, and then this round two and two here, I would try to get Corellia back if I'm able to, uh, if I can knock that out, you know, I've, they got seven guys there. If I can knock that out and take it, even if I lose West Russia next round, um, being able to try to reinforce is, is, is huge to, to get them off, off my back. Um, if I'm the Germans, so after the, the Russians take their turn. If I still hold Corellia, I like to try to go through Archangel as a back door. It's weaker and it's farther back. And if you take it, the Russians have to move backwards, which allows you to move your tro troops from the front line. If you're able to take West Russia back, great. If uh, Ukraine still stands and you can take uh, Caucasus, that's great. And honestly, if I can move from Corellia or sorry, to, uh, yeah, Corellia to Archangel um, and take Archangel and I can move into the Caucasus. That makes the Russians make a choice. They have to move north or south. They often don't have enough to take both back. So if I can come in strength to both of these two territories as the Germans, the next round they're open to attack. For the British, notice I've already moved a few of these fighters in to defend. 
And I want to continue as much as I'm able to, to shuttle fighters if this was the method that I used. If I use a Navy, I'm going to continue to build more battleships and uh, transports. And if I can get an aircraft carrier down to move my fighters onto it to make uh, it so you have a stronger defense, that's good too. And then I can start shuttling troops here to France. I can send them to the north um, and and just start dropping them wherever the Germans don't have a strong defense. And it makes it harder for the Germans to go out all out in the press. So that would be the option if you go the naval route. Down here, I'm just building three tanks every time and I'm pushing forward. The only reason I'm going to hesitate is if I see the Japanese transports within two. So if they're right here, they can move one, two. They could drop four guys on this territory and then move in all the fighters as well. So I'm going to be cautious if the Japanese do that or if they've got uh, guys here, or if they got the transports here or here or here. Uh, or anywhere closer, uh, I, I do not want to move all my tanks in. I'll move maybe some if I have enough to defend, but I'll move those in if I know that the uh, Japanese can't get after me. If I get to a point where I'm able to push through and start taking back all these territories and, and, and knock out uh, this area down here with their production, if I feel like I'm in a strong position with the British later in the game, I'm going to start taking tanks and moving them back to towards Europe so I can reinforce the Russians and try to push them back. For the Americans, I already talked out how I'm going to focus primarily on trying to really cripple the Japanese on this side. Uh, I could do that with naval attack, but I can go the bomber route and just build a whole bunch of bombers, and I could do that as well. I uh, because if I do, um, if I've got these territories over here, I can actually bomb J Japan pretty quickly from the United States and then uh, drop my bombers uh, back on either Manchuria or, um, or Russia itself and then um, continue to attack them. So that's it. That is my set of strategies for Axis and Allies. I'm not a master at this. I haven't won any tournaments but those are the approaches I take to this game that I love and enjoy that I've uh, been playing for a long time. I hope that's helpful for you and beneficial to you, for you. And again, if you've got any thoughts on other strategies that you might employ that you think are as strong or even stronger than the ones that I've suggested, uh, definitely drop some comments and I, I'd love to hear those and uh, ponder uh, potentially using those as well. Thanks for watching the video. Like and subscribe if you thought this was a helpful video to watch. And if you're interested in more Axis and Allies videos or other board games or other history related content. Uh, I'll see you next time.